dear students so today let us we deal the topic nuclear forces in the earlier class we have studied about the nuclear particles in the small nuclear space neutrons and protons are packed together this you have studied even in the lower classes now these neutrons and protons together in the nucleus are called nucleons the forces that binds the nucleons together is called nuclear forces there are two types of nuclear forces operating between the nucleons in the nucleus namely electrostatic force and nuclear force electrostatic force may be attractive or repulsive since nucleus has positively charged protons the electrostatic force between the two protons is repulsive in nature this causes instability in the nucleus now we have another force called the nuclear force which is a stronger force nuclear force is an attractive force operating between any two protons any two neutrons or a proton and a neutron this attractive force operates only within small distance of 10 raised to minus 16 meter this statement is very very important it rapidly falls to zero at the distances larger than 1.4 into 10 raised to minus 13 meter these forces do not follow the inverse square law the exact nature of the nuclear force is not well understood but it is believed to be interconversion of protons and neutrons according to h yukawa a meson oscillates between the two nucleons with a velocity <coughs> very close to that of light because of this interaction a proton may change into a neutron and a vice versa suppose if you take a proton proton reacts with negative meson and turns into neutron and neutron reacts with positive meson and turns to a proton <coughs> a small nucleus in case of the lighter elements is much more stable than a large nucleus which we found in heavy elements in small nucleus nucleons are very close to one another hence nuclear force dominates over the electrostatic force of repulsion in a large nucleus nucleons are spread over the space so that nuclear force operating on them is quite weak and also electrostatic force of repulsion becomes weak hence these nuclei are unstable here i have shown the nuclear force and the meson theory in a diagrammatic way how the attractive force and repulsive force exist between the protons and the neutrons and also the conversion of protons into neutrons and neutrons into protons now let us we study now about what are the factors that favors the nuclear stability other than the nuclear force within the nucleus there are three factors which play very important role in stabilizing the nucleus they are neutron proton ratio mass defect and binding energy 
let us we study these three one by one coming to the neutron proton ratio in light nuclei up to atomic number 20 the number of neutrons and protons are equal that is n by p ratio is 1 example in case of helium we have two protons and two neutrons in case of carbon we have six protons and six neutrons oxygen eight protons and eight neutrons nitrogen seven protons and seven neutrons etc in all these cases n by p ratio is one in stable nuclei with atomic number greater than 20, the n pi p ratio is found to be greater than 1, increasing up to 1.56. That is, the number of neutrons are greater than that of protons. This is to compensate repulsive force between the protons. The largest stable nucleus is bismuth 83-209. When n by p ratio is greater than 1.6, even with large number of neutrons, the nucleus becomes unstable and starts disintegrating. This phenomenon is called radioactivity. Here I have shown a, a diagram where neutron to proton ratio is 1 when it is 1 it is having a straight line and when it is greater than 1 it deviates from the straight line here it's given the heavier the nucleus nucleus the more neutrons are required for stability the belt of stability deviates from a 1 is to 1 neutron to proton ratio for high atomic mass. Now, in the second case also, we have, we know, we have studied the how it deviates and the heavy nucleus enters into that ratio. Just as the electrons in an atomic, in an atom have high energy levels, so also the protons and neutrons have energy levels in the neutrons. I repeat the statement what I have said. Just as the electrons in an atom have energy levels, so also the protons and neutrons have energy levels in the nucleus. According to the shell model of the nucleus, the protons and neutrons exist in energy levels or shells in the nucleus. Similar to the very stable structure of atoms with electrons to example the helium, neon 10, argon 18, krypton 36 and xenon 54 and radon 86. In the nucleus, certain number of neutrons and protons lead to extra stability. The nucleus with 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82 and 126 neutrons or protons are found to be most stable. These are called magic numbers. The nucleus of lead is most stable because it contains 82 protons and 126 neutrons, both being magic numbers. So, another the factor that is responsible for the nuclear stability is the mass defect. The mass of an isotope of an element is expected to be equal to the sum of the masses of electrons, protons and neutrons present in it. However, the actual isotopic mass m of an element is smaller than the sum of the masses of protons, neutrons and electrons present in it. 
the difference between the sum of masses of electrons, protons and neutrons present in an isotope and its actual mass is called mass defect. Mathematically, it is given as delta M is equal to atomic mass Z into Me that is atomic number into mass of electron plus atomic number into mass of proton plus the A minus Z that is mass number minus atomic number which gives the number of neutrons into the mass of the neutrons and the, the sum of this is when it is the subtracted from the mass of the actual mass of an isotope we get the mass defect. Here the mass of the electron is constant that is 0 0.0005486 amu. Mass of proton is 1.007277 amu and mass of neutron is 1.008665 amu that is atomic mass unit. In some of the cases, the mass of the electron is negligibly small when we take the heavy nuclei. In such cases, the mass defect will be the sum of the masses of protons and neutrons and it is subtracted from the actual mass of an atom also. Now, based on this, the problems will be asked generally. So, how to do the problems? Let us we take one or two problems here. Calculate the mass defect in helium atom whose actual mass is 4.002603 amu. Here atomic mass of helium is 2, mass of helium is 4, mass of the electron is 0 0.000586 amu. Mass of proton is 1.007277 amu. Mass of neutron is 1.008665 amu. If you add all the three and based upon the number of protons, neutrons and electrons, so we get 0 0.030378 amu which is the mass defect in this case. Here also I have given the another example, find the mass defect for the nucleus of helium. So it is also in the similar way. Coming to the another the term or the factor that depends on the stability of the nucleus that is binding energy. The binding energy of a nucleus is the energy required to break a nucleus into its individual protons and neutrons. It is a measure of nuclear stability. This value is directly related to mass defect. From Einstein's equation, binding energy is given as E is equal to delta M into C square where delta M is mass defect and C is the velocity of light. Many times it, they ask show that 1 AMU is equal to 931.5 million electron volts. How to do this? For this we know that 1 AMU is equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg and the velocity of light is 2.988 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. According to Einstein's mass energy relation that is E is equal to mc square substitute the values we get 1.492 into 10 raised to minus 10 kg meter square per second square or the joule. In nuclear chemistry 
energy is more often expressed in electron volts or million electron volts. We know that 1 electron volt is equal to 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 joule. Therefore, 1 AMU is equal to 1.492 into 10 raised to minus 10 divided by 1.602 into 10 raised to minus 19 electron volts. That is equal to 9.315 into 10 raised to 8 electron volts or this is equal to 931.5 million electron volts. Here the slide shows the mass defect and the binding energy. So how to calculate the binding energy and this we see in the subsequent the slides. This is a, a graph that is the binding energy versus mass number, the graph and in the graph, so it shows the packing fraction of the nucleus. Binding energy of the nucleus is calculated in the following ways. In the first, binding energy of the nucleus is equal to mass defect into 931.5 million electron volts. The another is binding energy per nucleons is equal to mass defect into 931.5 MeV divided by number of nucleons. The another way of calculation is binding energy per mole is equal to mass defect into 931.5 into 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 which is nothing but the Avogadro number. Both mass defect and binding energy are directly related to the stability of the nucleus. Larger the mass defect, greater is the nuclear binding energy and more stable the nucleus. The nuclei with mass numbers in the range 40 to 90 have the highest binding energy per nucleon. It is greatest for iron, cobalt, nickel region of the periodic table. Let us calculate the, take the problems on mass defect and binding energy. So the first problem, calculate mass defect and binding energy in helium nucleus whose actual mass is 4.00260 AMU. In this, we know the mass of the proton is 1.00782 AMU, mass of neutron is equal to 1.00866 AMU. Here we have not considered the mass of the electron. So therefore, the mass defect is equal to in case of the helium atom which contains two protons and two neutrons. So therefore, 2 into 1.00782 plus 2 into 1.00866 and in this value, you have to subtract the actual mass of the helium that is 4.00260. So by doing this, we get the mass defect is equal to 0 0.03036 AMU. If you multiply this value by 931.5, so I get 28.280 MeV. This is called binding energy of the helium nucleus. Binding energy per nucleon of helium is nothing but the above value divided by 4 because the 4 is nothing but it is the number of nucleons that is the number of protons and neutrons. Since it contains 2 protons and 2 neutrons therefore the number of nucleons are 4. So we get 7.07 .07 MeV. Binding energy per mole of helium nucleus is 
28.280 which is the binding energy of the nucleus into the into the Avogadro number that is 6.023 into 10 raised to 23 this is equal to 170.33 into 10 raised to 23 million electron volts per mole. So another example given here calculate mass defect and binding energy in lithium whose actual mass is 7.0182 AMU. So it is also in the similar way of the above you have to solve. So the mass defect in case of lithium nucleus is 0 0.0399 AMU and binding energy by multiplying it by 931.5 we get 37.167 MeV which is nothing but the binding energy of the lithium nucleus. Binding energy per the nucleon is this divided by 7 because the lithium contains the 3 protons and 4 neutrons totally it is 7. So binding energy per mole of lithium is also calculated. In the similar way, there is a one more problem is given. Calculate the mass defect and binding energy of the fluorine nucleus whose actual mass is 18.9984 AMU. This is also calculated in the similar way. So the fluorine is having the number of protons 9 and the number of neutrons 10 multiplying by them though and further adding their the masses we get the mass defect 0 0.1586 amu so the binding energy of the fluorine atom is the fluorine nucleus is mass defect into 931.5 so which is nothing but 147.736 mev this divided by 19 gives binding energy per nucleon and multiplying that by the Avogadro's number gives the binding energy per mole of the fluorine nucleus. So this is about the nuclear forces, then the neutron proton ratio, mass defect and binding energy and problems on the mass defect and binding energy. Go through this once again, concentrate on the problems. Thank you.